let's take a look at how to figure out an area of a complex figure with all right angles, which, make, which basically means that it will be made up of rectangles and squares. Let's figure out the area of this complex figure. You will notice that this figure here does have all of its sides labeled. The other thing to notice about this figure is it's not a rectangle and it's not a square. It's a complex figure. However, it is a complex figure made up of rectangles and squares. And in this case, it's two rectangles. I'm going to draw a dividing line to separate this figure into um, rectangles and or squares. And it's going to be a horizontal or a vertical dividing line. In this case, I'll draw a vertical dividing line. So this vertical dividing line now divides this figure into rectangles and squares. Now, there's really two parts here. And what's inside? There's really two different areas that we figure out here. And by figuring out these two different areas, we can put them together to figure out the area inside that complete complex figure. If we look at A1 first, Remember the formula for area is length times width. And then so, really for this one here, there's only two sides that are completely labeled 2 by 3, and they do meet at a vertex. And that really does describe that rectangle there. It's a 2 by 3, it's really a 3 by 2 rectangle. So we can multiply 3 and 2 together to go ahead and get 6 square meters. Now for the second area there, there's a lot of sides here that seem to have some labels. But there are only two complete sides where are completely labeled that completely describe the shape. The one that I'm highlighting right now is not one of those because this only goes part of the way up and down. And this one here also is not, the 11 here is not, does not completely describe one of the sides of this second area. The two numbers that completely describe these sides are 7 and 8, and they also, they do meet at a vertex. It's a 8 by 7 rectangle. So we multiply the numbers 8 and 7 together to get 56 square meters. Now, I stated earlier that we we're going to put these two together. And by putting them together to figure out the area of the complex figure, what I mean is that all we do is we add them. So we take 56, we add it together with that 6, and our label is going to be square meters. That's how you figure out area for this complex figure. We have another complex figure here where our first step is going to be to figure out those missing side lengths. So you'll see that there's one and two missing side lengths. Let's start with this missing side right here. Part of the way of the figure and the rest of the way is three gives us 18. So something in 3 gives us 18. So we know that that missing side length is going to be 15, 15 centimeters. Going vertically, going up and down, all the way up and down the figure is 14. Part of the way is 4. The rest of the way would be what to give us 14? What number would you have written in there? Hopefully 10. Now at this point I get to draw a horizontal or a vertical dividing line. And so if I draw a dividing line right here, it's not going to divide this part of the figure into a rectangle or a square. Same thing if I drew a horizontal dividing line all the way across like that there. It's not going to divide the rest of the figure into rectangles and squares. So what I really need to do is to be careful as to where it is that I draw it. 
Though it doesn't matter whether or not I draw a horizontal or a vertical dividing line, I would still end up with the same area as long as I computed things correctly. I drew a horizontal dividing line this time. Let's start with this part right here. And so we figure out the areas for each of those two rectangles that we've divided this into now. 15 is only a partial side, so we do not use it. However, 4 and 18 completely describe this rectangle. It's an 18 by 4 rectangle. Therefore, for that first area, that's 18 times 4. 18 times 4, I'll do that off to the side, 2, 3, 4, 7, that's 72, and this time it's in centimeters, so this is square centimeters. For the other rectangle here, it can't be 14 because 14 goes beyond the figure, beyond that shape. It's 10 by 3, and really it should be 3 by 10 if we're talking about length and width. So that second area is 3 by 10, which is 30 square centimeters. To figure out the area for this complete complex figure, what do I do with the 72 and the 30? Right, I add them. And then so 72 plus 30 is equal to 102, and it keeps that same label, square centimeters. So what's inside of this rectangle? 15 by f nope, 18 by 4, 72 square centimeters. And what's inside of this other rectangle was 30 square centimeters, and that's why I was able to go ahead and put them together, add them together, to get my total area inside of that complex figure. Okay, I have another complex figure here. First off, I'm going to label any unlabeled sides. And then so this side right here is not labeled. Um, and from this right here, 9 here, I can also say that this is 9 there. Now, with this complex figure, I actually have to draw two dividing lines. I can draw horizontal and vertical dividing lines if I needed to. And then so in this case, this is how I'm going to divide it. Just so that you can see as to how it is that I figure out these areas. And then so I drew not only a horizontal dividing line, I also drew a vertical dividing line. And then so now all I need to do is to figure out the area of this piece here, this piece here, and this piece right here to go ahead and figure out the area. Now this piece right here, and this top piece, is just 3 times 9. And I can pretty clearly see that, where 9 and 3 completely describe those two areas, and it would be square inches. Now this piece right here is also pretty easy in that it's 20 by 3. Those are two sides that are completely, that are part of the figure that I'm going around right now, part of that rectangle, that are completely labeled. And then so I will go ahead and write 20 times 3 here. 9 times 3, by the way, is 27, and 20 times 3 is 60. It's just this last piece. And this is probably the most complicated piece. And let me show you how I break it down. 12 is completely labeled. Now, I can't choose an opposite side, which is be, so I know it's not this, and this will only be a partial side anyway. Really, I'm looking at, and I can't choose 20, because 20 goes beyond the figure. And then, so really, I'm choosing this right here. However, this green piece right here is not labeled. And then, so I have to label it. It's 12 by something. And in this case, this and 9 more gives us 20. So if I take 20 minus 9 to get 11, and for 11 inches, now my sides are completely labeled where it would be easy for me to figure out that area. That area now is 11 by 12. So that was 
11 plus 9 does give us 20. And then so this area completely labeled now 11 by 12. 11 times 12 is 132. 132 square inches. All the other ones are square inches as well. So now for our area, and this was the third area that we figured out. For our area, we just have to add together those three areas that we already figured out. 132 plus 60 plus 27. 60 and 27 is 87 plus 132 is equal to, let's see, 9, 1, carry the 1, 219, and then carefully label that. That's 219 square inches. So as you see, in some cases you do have to draw more than one dividing line, just as long as you're dividing things into rectangles and or squares, carefully figure out what side lengths that you're going to use to figure out those areas, and then put all of those areas back together. All right, it's time for you to try. Go ahead and copy down this figure. You will notice that there's one, two sides that are not labeled. So you will have to figure out the labels for each of those sides first. Draw a dividing line. You can either draw this horizontal dividing line or draw a vertical dividing line. I do not care which one you draw because <laughs> either one that you draw, you will still end up with that same area. So draw, draw the figure first, label those unlabeled sides, then figure out that area. Go ahead and hit pause while you figure out that area. All right, welcome back. Ideally, you figured out the side lengths correctly. That is 11 going up and down, 3 and 8 more together. 4 and 11 more would give you 15. So this 2 is also 11. If you figured out those areas incorrectly, then most likely, well, you probably have the area incorrect as well, especially if you used those, um, those sides. Now, if you drew a horizontal dividing line, the horizontal dividing line would have gone from here to here. If you drew a vertical one, fine. Either way, you're still going to end up with that same area. This piece right here would be 4 times 3, which equals 12 square meters. This piece right here, it's 15 and 8 that completely describe those sides. That's why it's 15 times 8. Which equals 120 square meters. Now, there's still one more step where I have to add those two numbers together. The 12 plus 120 equaling 132 square meters. Now, if you had figured it out the other way, meaning that you had drawn a vertical dividing line, this would have been 11 times 4, which is 44. The other piece right here would have been 11 times 8, which is 88. And adding those together would, get, would have also given us 132 square meters. In that case, I actually used the labels, those side lengths that I had labeled. And so it would have been even more important that I ended up using the correct ones. So it didn't matter where it is that I drew that dividing line, whether it be horizontal or vertical, I'd still end up with that same area or what's inside that complex figure. And that's all about complex figures for you. We'll keep working on it.